Morning all, what's up? I am finally on the way to the post office to post this amazing Lewis Hamilton painting uh, to Jamie Cornish, who we finally found as a winner yesterday. So congratulations, Jamie. I hope you like it. Uh, well, it just so happens that the pub is right next door to the post office, so morning coffee was done there today. What a beautiful day it is. So today's going to be another day of not achieving enough on the job list. Um, the grass cutting that I was supposed to do today, uh, well in fact that I was supposed to do yesterday, just simply isn't going to get done. I've had a lovely morning though, just walking the dogs in this beautiful weather. Uh, pub for a coffee, I'm heading home now, um, before then heading out for lunch with a friend of mine. A friend that some of you might even know. Also, some interesting news that popped up today. Mick Schumacher, son of Michael Schumacher, seven times Formula One world champion and general legend, is going to be getting two days in two different Formula One cars at the rookie test after the Bahrain Grand Prix. Uh, it sounds like he's going to have one full day in the Ferrari, amazing, uh, and then followed by the second day in the Alfa Romeo. Uh, which will be an amazing experience for him. It'll be great for us as fans to see him finally in a Formula 1 car. It'll also provide some quite interesting feedback, I'm sure, uh, for both Ferrari and Alfa Romeo, having tested two different cars running the same power unit. So quite an interesting and exciting development. He's a kid with a bright future, not just because of his name, but because he's an awesome talent as well, running in F2 this year, of course and tipped to do pretty special things in the future. I have no doubt that it's going to happen. Your destination is on the left. Uh, right, so we've had a lovely lunch. We are in a pub garden and as you can see, I'm here with Andy J. Lots of you will know Andy J from uh, lots of motorsport broadcasting. Uh, we've worked together on Formula E back in the day. You presented Formula E for Channel 5 for a yep. while. That's right. Uh, I was also the man that got Mark to say massive flange on ITV. <laughs> <laughs> I was telling somebody about that the other day. He did. We had a bet behind the scenes and I was doing a piece to camera. He said, I bet you can't get the words massive flange. <laughs> I did it. <laughs> and here's the love hearts I promised you. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so Andy has done lots of stuff. British GT on yep. Channel 4. Uh, what other motorsports have you been involved with? Uh, a bit of MotoGP, lots of Speedway for Eurosport. I love yeah. the Speedway. That was yeah. great fun. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. No brakes and no gear. <laughs> just phenomenal racing and the other thing that you may well know Andy from and this is what I think I love him most for is his podcast which has been going out recently season one just been completed uh, tomorrow's nerd it's called and it's all about gadgets who doesn't love a gadget I do <laughs> it's been awesome I yeah, really it's been enjoyed good it fun. it's been good fun it's um been doing it with Jason Bradbury yeah it's 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 brilliant been working with Jason because he's anybody that doesn't know Jason he was the face of the gadget show um, Channel 5's obviously gadget show uh, for I think 11 years and then he just decided he's going to kind of forge his own path so I got fortunate enough to work with I mean he's the gadget legend UK's yeah. kind of biggest gadget dude yeah 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 well you are as well now you are lumped <laughs> no. in together no I was just asking questions man <laughs> I mean you know he's he's the guy that's the knowledge and it's uh it's been brilliant, but I've been exposed to some amazing gadgets as a result and some ridiculous things. Well, I've listened to them. I love the podcast, and uh, basically you're reviewing some of the most... It's a bit like... Do you remember Tomorrow's World? The really old people who watch this. Tomorrow's World. Do you remember Have that? you got some really old viewers? Yeah, Because yeah, yeah. I, called, I called Tomorrow's Nerd after Tomorrow's World, because I was like, because some people will get it, yeah, and some yeah, people yeah, will just yeah. be like, oh, nerd, cool. <laughs> but the idea is that you review some of the best gadgets, and, uh, and there have been some incredible ones. Ones of note for me were that uh, infrared heating panel yeah, yeah. that you could put in a house. Just quickly summarise that for us. Well, that's amazing. And actually, that's the first wave of, I think we're about to see a big change in, in how we heat our houses, which is great for you know things that are environmentally conscious as well. But this is all about the power of infrared and, and how actually you can, you get your body to this core temperature that isn't based around, you know, water or steam in pipes. Yeah. Um, but actually around, you know, this, this is a massive, you could, I mean, you can have huge, great rolls of the stuff that's sort of, you know, roll paper thin. Yeah. You know, sort of wallpaper thin, but but kind of great big scapes that will heat your entire space. And you can bury it into the wall. You can put it in the wall, you can plaster over the top of it, you can have it in your shower. And, and the infrared heat is a very healing heat as well. It's not just about warming your body, it's also about kind of targeting certain parts of your muscles. I'm yeah. obviously looking at your 54-year-old torso here <laughs> and kind of figuring you're going to have a few different aches and pains. I, I kind of struggle with a few kind of muscular challenges myself sometimes. And infrared, I mean, there are some 
uh, I think in Sweden, for example, infrared therapy is something that's yeah, used, yeah. and Russia as well is yeah. very big on infrared therapy. You can have saunas and stuff that, that are coated yeah. with infrared. So, so I thought it was just yeah, it was really ingenious. Cool. Those kind of gadgets I love that are just simple but brilliant, and it could be a game changer. So that kind of thing's great. Look it up if you haven't seen it already. Uh, what what other things? What was your favourite gadgets? Because you've talked about phones, you've talked about gaming. Yeah. Uh, I mean, all sorts of music. I was listening to this morning, in fact. The music nice. One. Um, so what's your favourite thing you've covered on the show so far? So this is the biggest problem with doing a gadget show um, is that it ends up getting really expensive <laughs> because it's not just about you know, do I like this? You then start going, oh no, I've now tried it and I really want it. It's like driving yeah. supercars. You know, yeah. once you've had a go and then you get back in a car that isn't necessarily a supercar but is yours, yeah. it then feels, ah, oh, okay, oh, I'm really happy to be in this. So your house is but, now full of gadgets. Yeah, well, I, 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 yeah, I, there are some that I can't justify buying yet, but they're on the, well, clearly I'm going to have to buy this when I've got the money. The two things that have stayed with me is I really, I really need these, right? Yeah. The first one was the Deviolet Phantom Gold speaker, which is the most amazing, noisy, beautiful looking piece of art of a Bluetooth speaker. Yeah. That's unbelievably expensive. <laughs> I mean, thousands of pounds, but just, so we got, we got the top of the range one, the Phantom Gold, I believe it's called. Uh, we got the top of the range one, which is about this big. Yeah. It's, it weighs about as much as an elephant. I mean, it's seriously heavy. <laughs> And it's, it's so loud that um, we could have it out here, right, in the, in the open air, and if we put it on full volume, you and I would genuinely be at risk of going deaf. Is that right? That's how, if we sat that close to it. <laughs> Love it. Obviously in the studio, the, the risk is much, much higher. <laughs> so we had to be very, very careful with how loud we, we made it. But it is, it's brilliant. I loved it, and I really want one. They're amazing. They do smaller, cheaper versions that how aren't as loud. How much are we talking about? Oh, it's like a couple of grand. Is it? For, a, a, you know, for a speaker. Yeah, yeah. You're yeah. kind of like, uh, it's difficult to justify. Well, for some people, music is is that important. Well, I'm I'm that person, but still, two thousand yeah, pounds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and I've got speakers. Getting it past the missus is the exactly problem. right. Nail on the head there. <laughs> um, and the other one was the high bed, which oh, yeah. was the greatest. I mean, it's it wasn't it was a bed, right? But it was the most high tech. It's it's HI bed, and it's the most high tech bed I've ever seen because it's the bed that turns into many things, including a home cinema. Now, bearing in mind we did a special episode about a home cinema and we worked out that to get a really great home cinema you could spend you could you could spend 400 grand and still not have the best kit you know what i mean <laughs> this thing for 16000 pounds you get the comfiest bed what? on the planet now this is a bed right okay. 16000 pounds you get the comfiest bed on the planet which has side walls that go up if you want them to yeah full integrated all integrated then you've got a full hd projector uh, where your head is, obviously above your head. The back part of the bed turns into the silk screen, so full on size projector. Amazing. It all links up to, it's all kind of connected to everything <laughs> in your life. The, uh, the mattress, it, it's fully adjustable, so you can be sitting, it can, it can basically work you out. If, yeah. you, if you can't be able to exercise, you can get them, make the bed exercise you. All the lights change, you've got different ambience, you've got different, I mean, you can upscale this to anything. I've called it 16 grand because I went for the budget version. It's basically just the cinema and some <laughs> funky incredible. sides and some funky lights. It sounds but awesome. It's amazing, man, and I can't stop thinking about it. See, when you said the high bed, it made me think of when, when my wife Claire was pregnant with our twins, she got so big, and we were living in a tiny flat, I mean, not much bigger than this table, tiny. There was the two of, two of us, we had twins on the way, and my two eldest kids. So we had this double and he's bed. Had that seven I... kids since this as well. I mean, the man is a breeding machine. <laughs> so I built this thing where I raised the bed up high, which is why I thought of high bed. Nice. Up on stilts, but it was so high that was when that just great big just because she couldn't get in. She could. You just wanted it... the bed to yourself. No, her belly was touching <laughs> the ceiling on the way up. On, on the... So, so she struggled to actually sleep in it at the height of her pregnancy. Well, that's wow. when it that's what it jumped into my mind. And anyway, I built this thing up in the air, which the cots for the babies, the twins, went underneath. That's brilliant. The older kids were on the sofa bed. We were all shooed like cram hall crammed into this shoebox. Oh man, uh, that sounds amazing. But yeah, that sounds like an old American TV show. Yeah, I mean, not as... Good night, John as, Boy. I can't remember the <laughs> yeah, name of the show exactly now, like The that. Waltons. <laughs> um, so not as high-tech as the Hybrid, which sounds awesome, but 16 grand for the budget version? Yeah, 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 but, but, if you think about how much you would spend, if you wanted a home cinema, right, and a really nice bed, yeah, yeah, the two, you put the two things together, yeah, it's yeah. going to cost you more than 16 okay. grand. All right, winner. All right, I'll take I one. I loved it. I loved it. <laughs> that and the Deviolet, 
And like what, 20 grand all in and you're set. Okay. You're set for life. And what about cars? Have you covered much in the way of car technology on the show? Yeah, I mean, we've, do you know what? We've obviously done a lot about cars because it's, it's my passion and background. Yeah. And, you know, we've, we've looked at lots of electric cars, etc. But one of the cars that really excited me was the Hyundai Nexo, which is a hydrogen car. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. for me, that was a really, like, to drive it was a fascinating experience. I was lucky enough, I'd already driven it uh, on the very, I, was, I think I was one of the first three people in the UK to have driven it anyway yeah. without without any press requirements. They just let me have a go, which was great. And so I really wanted to get it on the show because it was fascinating. Yeah. Um, the key for me is that is that is completely clean driving. Everyone kind of thinks of hydrogen. They're like, uh, wasn't there a bomb that was hydrogen? <laughs> well, yes, of course. And, and it's it can be very uh, unstable, but if done properly, Mm. Which of course, Hyundai are hardly going to get involved in something that, no, 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 that's, that's like, right. oh, there's a bit of a risk here. But if done properly, you're talking about the only thing that comes out of the car from production of the fuel through to fueling the thing around however much you want to drive it is water vapors. I know, it's amazing. It is amazing. Yeah. I mean, lots of you guys have messaged me saying, can Formula One ever go hydrogen? You know, if, if Formula E have locked in the battery electric single seater championship for years, which they have with an exclusive deal, could Formula One go, go hydrogen powered? Uh, and there are various ways to do it. There's hydrogen electric, there's also hydrogen say, combustion. The two, they? So there's loads of ways. So I think it's a fascinating technology and there's a, a few companies like them. I think Toyota have got involved with hydrogen as well. And we'll just are, wait for the 2020 Olympics. Next year, the hydrogen is going to be, it's Japan, isn't it, I believe, yep. next year? So next year you're going to see every, um, every vehicle that takes the athletes to the venues is going to be hydrogen powered. Right? There's going to be, there's a fleet of buses and coaches that are all hydrogen fuel. So I think, what, what I think is really interesting is 2020 is going to be the year, I, th I suspect, where there will become a, almost a um, an arm wrestle between electrification and hydrogen. Yeah, yeah. It's because be... I think people aren't people in the UK at least aren't really thinking that hydrogen's a, com a competitor. And I think next year with with the Olympics, we're going to see a, a bit of a game change. It's going to be a bit like that old battle between Betamax and VHS from years gone yep. by, isn't it? And because it will be, because one of them will come out on top, and that will be it forever. That will be the one that moves forward. So they can't. I'm sure they won't both survive because you need an infrastructure to support one or right. the other. Right, and, so, and people will say well there's already loads of charging points and they're getting built more and more and more and a lot of the major manufacturers have gone there but you know when you've got the likes of Toyota and Hyundai you know these are people with a lot of money and a lot of clout they're massive companies so it's gonna be very interesting to see what happens all right well, we might even see different countries adopt different you know we, yeah, yeah. you and I sort of think yeah of course it's got to be universal but actually maybe you know hydrogen will be in one country and electric will be another and I don't know and what about a uh, hydrogen based Formula One. Ever see it? Well, do you know what? The people that whinge about Formula E at the moment whinge about the lack of noise, yeah. right? That's not fixed with hydrogen, is it? <laughs> no. But good for the planet, bingo. <laughs> All Although, right. yeah, no, probably not. No, okay. All right, well, that's maybe some way in the future. Uh, all right, what about you then? When can we next see you on our telly boxes? Oh, I don't know. Today. I mean, I'm, I'm going to be trying to get on this every week, <laughs> and then we'll have to see. Well, Andy and I have been having lunch today because we've been discussing some really interesting projects, which may or may not happen, but I love it when we're at this phase and we've got ideas floating around. It's been one of those lunches where we've been bouncing ideas off each other. Uh, so at some point, you'll see us together again, I have absolutely no doubt. Um, for now then, mate, loving the podcast, loving your work. Thanks, Great man. To have lunch Ditto. Here. See you soon. Thanks, buddy. Cheers, guys. I'm sorry about the noise, by the way. There's a bunch of road workers just over here smashing something with a hammer. It's not sure it's Mark's fans. and They're, <laughs> they're basically taking his car to pieces and they want to watch him rebuild it before he gets home. <laughs> Cheers, guys.